G'day folks, Ziggy D here, and it's finally time. My final build guide for my Poison Acid Flask Trapper on the Rogue Falconer. So my initial plan was to quickly grab a vial of Volatile Ice and go Cold Conversion with this build, but it actually took me so long to even find my first one, despite it being one of like the most common items in the game. And when I finally did, I was so deep into the Poison version that I decided to just actually finish it off before messing with Volatile Ice. The results have exceeded my expectations. Prior to launch, Acid Flask was basically a meme skill, as it had no real support in the game for playing it. But Falconer brings a lot of tools to this build, and surprisingly allows for building a very tanky character as well, as far as life-based rogues are concerned. High block, high dodge, good armor, a decent life pull, full glancing blows, endurance stacking, and very solid life recovery, all on a very fast character, make this a sturdy build. The footage here is all over 200 Corruption, and there's a very nice tier 4 Jewelry kill in there too. We'd have no problem pushing Corruption higher on this build and continuing to scale upwards, but it's time for me to mess with the Ice version, so I wanted to make sure I made this guide before I swapped over. While I doubt this is as busted as some other Falconer's setups, and sure, we're not getting infinite ward or anything like some builds are getting right now, these are some very impressive results from what was basically a passion project build that I wasn't sure would even really work. And it has been an absolute blast to tinker with and to gear with some very clear goals and powerful milestones which always feels really good. And then it still worked with no starting gear as my actual league starter, right? I kicked off from 1.0 with the fresh start on this build in solo self found with Circle of Fortune, so it's very doable from nothing paving its own way. Of course, it's only going to be easier in Merchant's Guild when you can acquire the specific things you want, or if you already have a good stash of items, of course. So how does the build work? Acid Flask is just a cute little throwing skill that throws a flask that explodes on enemies, dealing some physical damage and poisoning them. It's nothing too impressive by itself. It can get some very, very strong poison scaling, but it doesn't hit a lot or apply poisons very quickly. And if you add poison pulls to the skill, which is very strong, it even gets a cooldown, so it's not really spammable. It becomes more of a support skill, really. And you could use Acid Flask as some sort of support skill for some sort of like shuriken poison build or something like that. But in this build, I wanted Acid Flask to kind of be the star of the show. So we bypass the restrictions that it has, like its cooldown and its inability to be spammed and stuff like that, with Explosive Trap. These traps can be specced to throw lots of traps that throw lots of additional traps, so that's a lot of extra poisons from any global poison chance we have. But even better, the traps also throw acid flasks at nearby enemies, bypassing any cooldown and allowing us to throw multiple of them at once. Up to 10 traps and 5 acid flasks per toss. Way better than just slowly throwing single flasks yourself. Supplementing this is our Falcon, who also throws acid flasks using all of our stats and scaling, as well as providing us with some nice buffs and also culling low health enemies for us. The biggest drawback to this build in this particular setup really is that throwing all of those traps that throw all those flasks is very, very mana hungry. We reduce costs where possible and get a few supplemental mana recovery systems in place, but to let us recover mana quickly after we dump an astronomical number of poisons on an enemy, we use shurikens turned into a bit of a shield skill, a blade vortex. Because of our mana cost reduction, we can throw these for free and they actually replenish mana thanks to the rogue's sapping strikes passive. It becomes a generator. But this isn't some just boring generator that doesn't do anything, I hate those. This skill actually hits an absurd number of times, stacking a lot of poisons very quickly, and it also shreds enemy poison resistance, heals us and gives us a ton of armor. All great stuff. With very high movement speed and shift to scoot around dodging attacks, we throw traps that fling themselves across the screen to any enemies in sight, giving some very nice clear. Being damage over time traps, the killing is a little bit delayed, but the clear speed more than makes up for that I reckon, the way they fling themselves across the screen and how fast we move. We weave in some shurikens every so often to buzzsaw any enemies that we run past and to replenish our mana. That said, once you get better reduced mana cost rings eventually, you can basically self-sustain mana without needing to shuriken much outside of bosses if you prefer. You can definitely tinker and fine tune a bit here to get a pretty comfortable playstyle for your tastes. So let's jump into the skills for a bit more detail on how everything comes together. Do note though, if you want more info on the leveling setup, make sure to check out my leveling video that also shows the earlier endgame setup that I used there. 
A correction from that video though, I didn't realize that Toxic Cell though in Acid Flask doesn't actually multi-hit the same enemy. It's actually written there on the node, I'm just an idiot. <laughs> so I recommend skipping that for leveling and just getting some damage in AoE early on instead. It'll actually be easier because it doesn't cost so much mana. For our endgame setup on Acid Flask, we grab Poison Pools and one to two points in Amatoxic Pools here. This makes enemies afflicted with it take increased damage over time, very good stuff. We also aim to max out Hydrochloric Acid here, which gives us global poison chance while we stand in the pools. As we stand next enemies for the shurikens anyway, this is basically always active and a big boost to our overall poison output. Finally, big late game damage scaling comes from maxing out the poison duration here and knowledge of immunity. This last one is crucial. Every 5% poison resistance we get gives 3% poison resistance penetration on enemies with Acid Flask's poisons. It's actually possible to get a few hundred percent more damage effectively from this node alone. And as your gear gets better and better, you'll keep ramping with more and more poison resistance, increasing your damage further. I have about 400% poison resistance, which is around 240% penetration. Just insane. <laughs> it seems like all of these like scale with resistance nodes across the game on different builds are very strong. Now some of the things that might tempt you, like the mana cost reduction and the throw speed and the AoE here, are really not worth it. The mana efficiency ends up being pretty unimpactful compared to the minus mana cost rings, and you can get a fair bit of AoE elsewhere, and it's not really necessary with the amount of acid flask that we're putting out. The slow is handy for one point if you don't have any other source of it though. Make sure you max out this damage here, as this does carry over to your poisons. Generic damage increase like this does work. Acid Flask overall is the best skill to get extra skill levels in, as there's like a bunch of poison nodes here and here that you can dump those points into. There's always something to spend to get more damage. For the Falcon, we grab the nodes to let it toss flasks and give it more charges for burst damage. The extra charge gain here you can use early on, but eventually when you start tossing explosive traps instead, you won't really ever trigger this, so it's not worth it long term. Wake of Wings over here is a very nice buff that gives us a bunch of speed and the Falcon actually fully activates and maintains this buff. You just put the points in and it does it. You don't need to worry about it at all, it's great. Hunter's Spoils over here is very helpful late game for mana sustain. It's good to get early on even just for the life, but long term you want to hit that 40 attributes breakpoint to get one mana whenever your Falcon kills an enemy or more often relevantly when it hits a boss or rare enemy. 40 total attributes is pretty easy to get early endgame with a bit of dexterity and vitality from gear and the passive tree, and if you're pretty close to that breakpoint, put a few points into your passive tree just to get a bit of extra dexterity or something to try and reach that, as it does make a nice difference. You won't really get 80 until later endgame where you're rocking much better gear, I only just recently got that. But once you do, it feels really good. Finally, Bird of Prey over here lets the Falcon Strikes ability, so when you have it on your bar and you press the button again, it does makes the bird go swoosh, 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 swoosh. <laughs> when you do that, it will culling strike or insta-kill any low health enemy below 16% health. You basically press this when the enemy is at about 17% or 18%, and they'll dot tick down and then this will kill them. Falcon Strikes hits multiple times, so it's a really easy culling strike method to use. Worth pointing out here that things like minion damage and damage from things like Falconer's Journey here don't scale the acid flasks the Falcon throws. They are 100% your own personal stats and they're not really even considered a minion attack, it's just the bird is triggering your attack effectively. I just grabbed Falconer's Journey here as my 21st point for a bit of extra damage now that my Falcon also got some poison chance from a passive skill, so it's just a nice little extra bonus, but you can totally skip that and just go with like more duration and Wake of Wings or something. You get to this point around level 20 and there's not too many things to spend the points on that are relevant for this build, but the Falcon is great overall. Explosive Traps is the star of the show and you want to rush the full point spend into the Trap Sprinkler Branch ASAP to have it spam floss for you. So that's these nodes here, make sure to get this one here, and of course these behind it. I recommend then coming down this way and grabbing Cold Snap Mines, Static Mines, and the Trappers node in between them. This lets you throw three traps that throw three flasks with no increase to mana cost beyond the flask triggers themselves. If you have no global chill chance, also grab a point here into Flash Frozen. Chill's just too good to pass up, so it's good to have an activator for that. The next priority is actually this little unassuming node over here, Smoke Traps. This little thing is one of the single best points you can ever spend for defenses. It gives you effectively infinite glancing blows and dodge scaling through Dusk Shrouds from all of the extremely large amount of hits that we're putting out with Explosive Traps. With this, you don't really even need to cap glancing blows normally, as you'll get upwards of a 1000% chance for glancing blows with this. 
as long as you're in combat. It's just not a bad idea to have some base glancing blows just as a fallback for if you get caught sleeping though, but it's not really even necessarily essential. Finally, you want to path through the reduced mana cost nodes here, in particular the subtle sabotage is very impactful. And then you go into clustered explosives. Start with just one point as it does increase the mana cost significantly, both in terms of the cost of explosive trap but also the extra acid flask trigger. Later on if your mana is feeling comfortable and when you get some nice exalted reduced mana cost rings you can try going for two points or you can leave it at one point if you just want comfier mana uptime with less shuriken usage. I opted for that extra point as I don't mind the shuriken usage and that burst of your damage feels really good. Shift ailment cleanse in the top left is essential for clearing debuffs. And the shadow down here in the bottom right can throw a copy of your explosive traps including all of the flasks they spawn as well. So you use shift and then throw your explosive traps and it throws a full set of explosive traps as well. It's a cute boost to clear speed. You can also have it drop acid flask but this is mostly just cute. More important really is the mana regained and reduced mana cost and cooldown speed over here. I like rebound as well so that shift is always off cooldown if you're getting a really bad situation. Finally for shurikens you first want blade shield and then the armor nodes behind it. This increases your armor per shuriken that you have active. We throw a ton of shurikens so it boosts armor by a crazy amount. Make sure you also rush the full 4 points into pierce chance here. This stops enemies from consuming it. It doesn't allow you to multi-hit the same enemy with each shuriken, but it means that you can move through packs and the shurikens will stay around hitting every single mob in the pack and that the shurikens will stay, leaving your armor buff intact. The poison res shred down here is just nice for maintaining max stacks of poison shred on enemies while you rebuild your mana, just to keep your damage uptime optimal. And of course the poison chance here and the additional shurikens boost both your damage and your armor. Any extra points you get long term can be put into damage to scale the poisons. Just a single minus mana cost ring makes shurikens free and activates that mana generator effect that it has. Now let's talk passive tree. Guile is poison res. Again that's huge damage so max it. Evasion is also a must max as is sapping strikes over here for life and mana sustain. Beyond that the falconer's tree is the higher priority for earlier point spend so get to 20 points and then start spending your points there instead. But long term you can come back to put points in things like poison chance and health gain on glancing blow. Now before we do look at the falconer, blade dancer does have one thing here to pay attention to, the 5 point bonus for pursuit is 8% movement speed. Movement speed is the best stat in the game so you probably want to get this. Now in falconer raptor's wings gives global more damage while hasted. It also gives you near perma haste itself, so it's a must max. Outlander's tenacity gives you health as endurance threshold, and it makes getting extra endurance scaling on your gear really strong. But it's even great even in its own right without any other gear support, so max it. Supplemental mana regeneration is available here from Stamina of the Rover. We dodge a lot, get a lot of dodge chance scaling in this. A little bit of extra mana regen doesn't hurt, but mostly that 5 extra mana will help you keep your damage uptime even higher. Blast Radius is some nice extra AoE, so it's a solid pickup for 5 points. Deflect and Weave is amazing, but don't 5 point it if you're using a shield. We already max Glancing Blows with Explosive Trap Spam, and we actually want to stack Block as well. But the extra Block and Life Gain is also really good, so 4 points in this one is very good. But the extra Block and Life Gain is really good, so you want to put 4 points in this. Coordinate of Fate is like a really weird node, but it's kind of amazing. Put one point in it and your first skill slot, that is the first one on the bar here, will give you a silver shroud when you use it, a guaranteed dodge of any attack. I use shift in my first slot but use whatever you like. There's a 10 second cooldowns on this so I find shift kind of perfect as I usually use it when I want that dodge when I'm either engaging enemies or escaping something nasty. Intuitive connection here is one point to make falcon strikes for culling bosses instant which means you don't have to interrupt what you're doing to use it, it feels so much nicer. Now I know I keep saying explosive trap maxes glancing blows but it's pretty nice to get a bunch passively for those unexpected moments. So poise gives a bunch of it and then doubles it if you haven't been hit recently. With high dodge this is active pretty often. Tailwind is an amazing capstone node so max it out and also get the bonus damage per slow here from strike their flank. Make sure to have a source of slow. If you don't have the Viper Tail Belt, put one point into the Acid Flask Slow on the tree to enable it easily. 
Late game, it's well worth maxing Finesse them here to help get crit avoidance with a bonus of extra life gain on crit. Now we're not a crit build, but even with like only 10% crit chance, the amount of hits we put out actually means a lot of crits are going on on the field. So it's a lot of recovery and very nice. Anything else on the tree is basically just damage, stats, or life. Grab them as you desire with any extra points, but that covers the important stuff. For my gearing guide here, I want to go through each slot and show my item a non-unique generic alternative with basically example stats that you can go for if necessary, and any alternative uniques that I didn't have that you could also consider. I'm approaching this from a circle of fortune mindset. We target farm what we can and we use what we get. It's the circle of fun life for me. Just know that in general our gearing goals in rough order of importance are throwing mana cost reduction, resist cap, life, capping crit avoidance if you can, poison chance, poison resistance, throwing speed, mana sustain, and increase poison or damage over time, or any other defenses like armor, block, and endurance. It's also essential to get a source of leech that works for our poison. You can get that from the helmet base Pinnacle Helmet's Implicit Generic Damage Leech, or from a Bleeding Heart Unique Amulet. Yes, dots can leech in this game, and yes, it's very good. But you have to make sure the leech isn't something like melee damage or hit damage or something like that. It needs to be generic leech or let's say you're an ignite. It needs to be like fire leech or something or elemental leech like that. Spell leech or throwing damage leech isn't going to work here. For us, we just need that generic damage leech. Now some gearing traps to avoid are that we don't want things like flat throwing damage. It does nothing for us, as does throwing damage increases as poison doesn't deal throwing damage, it deals poison damage. Damage over time or poison damage or things like generic damage while holding a dagger is okay, as is things like throwing attack speed as that means more hits. Now starting with the helmet, like I said the pinnacle helmet is the best for leech. If you get leech elsewhere then you can instead use throwing speed, poison resistance or just some other damage base instead. Leech is essential long term here though, don't forget that. You want life, resists, ideally poison if everything else is capped, vitality which is more life and poison resistance, and you can get acid flask AoE on here as a semi-rare mod as well. As it's pretty tricky to get good stats on a one specific base like a pinnacle helm, don't be afraid to use a rare like I am, it doesn't have to be exalted to be good. For the amulet, if you're not using a bleeding heart, then use the base to cap resistances if needed, otherwise get throwing attack speed or less damage over time taken. Dots are pretty scary in this game, so the dot mitigation one is the best option long term, I think. Poison penetration can roll on the amulet, so that's very good, as is poison resistance. Those are your main chase stats. For the chest, bases with crit avoidance, poison resist, or endurance are all nice. The best affix is acid flask levels, of course, otherwise vitality, health, poison resistance, as you can. For uniques, you could totally use a Kestrel with legendary potential, a Core of the Mountain, or an Elikos Abandon. A good LP Elikos is theoretically the best, giving AoE and extra levels to all throwing skills. However, it does eat your potions whenever your bird or you throw an Acid Flask. It gives a lot of damage, but not having your potion when you need it is a pretty big drawback. If you want to work around for this, you can remove the bird throwing flask and just use Explosive Trap, as that doesn't actually trigger the effect. Alternatively, you could spec for Potion Find and just kind of lean into this mechanic, even using something like Jungle Queen's Chaps or the Scavenger Belt for extra Potion Find. In the end, I liked the simplicity and durability of my rare chest with lots of life and Acid Flask levels. For the weapon, you want a dagger, ideally with Poison Chance, implicit if you can, and Poison Chance is the highest priority affix. Poison Penetration is also very good, and Damage Over Time or Poison Scaling. If you can get a Drought's release with Legendary Potential to combine with any of those affixes, then that's obviously insanely good. I obviously rolled a really good one here. For the offhand, you could dual wield daggers if you get two really good ones, but I recommend a shield to really boost survivability. If you use a rare, the Carapace shield base actually has 75% poison resistance on it, insanely good. For affixes, you want blocks chance and life gain on block with resistances. From the unique options, a well-rolled Cradle of the Erased is very, very good. Because of our mobility and high dodge, the block chance buff stays quite high, resulting in something like a 60% plus block chance with it. And it also has a ton of block effect, so it's a really good shield. Another option is Face of the Mountain from the Lightless Arbor boss. It has OP endurance stacking synergy. 
but I think Cradle or a Carapace Shield is the best in slot here. For Belt, the best in slot is a Legendary Viper Tail. It's got Poison Chance and Slow as well as some nice dodge, ideally paired with some defenses and poison damage from your Legendary Affixes. A rare with Poison Resist Implicit and the Experimental Mana Gain Affix could be neat if you don't have a Viper Tail. The Glove's best in slot is debatably Luraka's Claws. These give a ton of poison and extra shurikens which gives more armor and more poisons with those shurikens. Rares can get hybrid health, throwing attack speed and damage over time, all good stuff though. The base that gives armor applying to damage over times is amazing too, so that's also one to keep an eye out for. As a side note, you want to get frailty somewhere wherever you can. Gloves, amulet and relic for example. It only needs to be tier 1, so don't make it a priority, but you do want to have it at least at tier 1 somewhere. It only stacks 3 times, and we hit so many times that it's very easy to max out, and it makes enemies deal a lot less damage to you. Now an alternative unique for the gloves is Salt the Wounds, which has pretty solid stats and gives poison penetration. It also effectively gives another way to scale with crit multiplier. For Relic, a rare goes for Poison Chance or Poison Resist, base implicit, and just health, damage, and resist. If you can get a good one, the Gambit of the Erased Rogue is obviously solid here with the extra skill levels. I ended up getting a pretty amazing one. For Boots, movement speed is an obvious priority, otherwise hybrid health and other generic stats. I'm just using some Giga Health ones that I've found, but there are a couple decent uniques available. Lessons of the Metropolis and Advent of the Arrays with decent stats are the main ones here. Both just have some decent defensive properties. Finally, the most important slot, Rings. Above all else, get minus mana cost for throwing attacks. Highlight it on your filter. Initially, you only need one tier, as tiers 1 through 5 all do the same thing as far as we care, minus 3 cost, that doesn't change. Endgame though, your biggest chase is a tier 6 or tier 7 minus cost, as tier 6 is minus 4 and tier 7 is minus 5. If you get a Rune of Creation, save it to mirror a good exalted mana cost ring for this build so that you can have two of them. Other stats are just gravy here, but you want things like Poison Resist if possible of course. Now for idols, initially as always, this is how you tinker with your resist to like cap out and change things around as you change your gear around, right? But late game when your gear is much better and you don't need those resists so much, they're a great way to get more life and damage. Vitality, Poison Resistance, Chance to Poison and Increased Damage while wielding a dagger are all great examples here. You can also get some things like health gain on dodge and AoE scaling here too. And finally, for blessings, I primarily recommend getting resistances. Each suffix you can save on gear here can be dedicated to poison resistances or life. That's a big win. With the armor scaling we get on this build thanks to shurikens, the flat armor from Spirits of Fire is great, but with our endurance threshold, the endurance is also a good option too. I only really have the mana from Lagon because I haven't farmed him. But it's fine as it gives us more burst damage when you unload on a boss. If I wanted to push my gear a bit further, I could swap to the resist. And there we have it, my detailed guide to probably my favorite build so far. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did, and feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. That's it for now, I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.